Welcome to CNBC at Work, where top newsmakers and thought leaders share their strategies for building and empowering the workforce of the future. CNBC's At Work live stream is sponsored by Workday, Coupa, the Society for Human Resource Management, T-Mobile for Business, and ZipRecruiter. Now, here's John Fort. Good afternoon, everybody, and thank you for joining us. So we've got two great conversations on tap today with Bill McDermott, CEO of ServiceNow, and Cynthia Marshall, CEO of the Dallas Mavericks. Now, throughout these conversations, uh, I want to hear your questions, your comments. The way we're going to do that is through Twitter. So our handle on Twitter uh, is at CNBC events. So be sure to include that. But even more key, include the hashtag CNBC at work uh, as you share your questions and comments. We'll be able to see those. I'll be able to incorporate them into the conversation that we're having because we really want it to be uh, as collaborative as possible. Hear what you have to say as you weigh in. So um, let's get started. Uh, Bill McDermott is the CEO of ServiceNow. It's got a market cap of more than $75 billion. The company's software gets into the nitty gritty of how we work, uh, seeking to make analog workflows digital and more efficient. Uh, before he was CEO there, uh, November, I think it was, he was CEO at SAP, which is also a hugely influential enterprise software company. Bill, thanks for joining me. Thank you for having me, John. Um, now, I want to frame this. We're talking future of work in this way. Say, at minimum five years out, I want to talk about the things that uh, are definitely not going to change, you think, and the most important things that are going to change. So right now, we're going through a, a period that's marked by this pandemic, by some social unrest. I want to start with the pandemic and ask, what is it that you have seen changing in your organization during this period that's going to stick in five years from now um, as the, the company is seeking to do its work, it's still going to be happening. It's become a work from anywhere world, John. So the idea of the traditional office and the traditional desktop is now an artifact of COVID-19. Uh, people will work from home, they'll work on the fly, and they'll in certain cases, use the office as a place to go as an outlet. You have many dual income families with child care and elderly care issues where the office is actually a necessary uh, productivity tool for them. But for the most part, the power has moved to the people. The wellness uh, and the health and well being of the people is now the foremost priority of executives that understand you're in a war for talent. And uh, it's all about giving that extra perk which is called choice to the people. <laughs> so how does that affect both where you choose to put your offices? Because there's a, there's a lot of expensive real estate in Silicon Valley where people, you know, companies have felt that they needed to, to put down stakes. How does that affect that? How does it affect where you allow your talent to locate and, and, and how you pay them? I mean, do you end up, if somebody wants to live in Idaho, do you index their pay to Idaho and pay them less than somebody who, for whatever reason, either wants to or has to live in, in New York, say, or there in the Valley. I think that's one of the great breakthroughs uh, because work is work, no matter where the work is done. So if a person has the talent to do the work and they're in Idaho or New York City or Atlanta, Georgia, or somewhere in uh, a faraway place outside the United States, then they're more than welcome at companies like ServiceNow because we understand that it's all about talent and not necessarily where the talent is domiciled. So it really has changed everything. We learned this when we did the emergency response apps and now the return to workplace apps. It's just so clear that people are very concerned about health and wellness and they want choice. And that choice, in my humble opinion, is um, beholden on every CEO to give to the people. And when you do that, you're going to get great productivity payback. And in fact, in terms of, you know, hiring people, onboarding people, and even offboarding people, these will all be now digital workflow processes. So this, um, this distributed work, um, this work from anywhere has really tethered to the workflow revolution very nicely. How you're a culture and communication guy. 
Um, if people, if they don't know you, pretty soon in a couple of minutes, they're going to get your energy and kind of understand how you communicate. What do you have to adjust as a leader when um, maybe there's a, a, a much bigger percentage of the workforce that you're not going to see in person, uh, that, that might not even see their manager in person uh, on a regular basis? Is there a different mode of communication that has to happen? Is there a different kind of intentionality around what you do with culture? Yeah, John, it's such a good question. I got lucky. You know, when I first came into ServiceNow, I did a world tour, the Dream Big Tour, and I got a chance to meet all of our colleagues around the world in person. And that gave me a great edge because to some extent that they, they had known me. Um, had the COVID crisis hit without that as a backdrop, it would have been harder. Um, but what I've learned in business and in life, anything worth communicating is almost always under communicated. So the opportunity to communicate, to share ideas, to literally be in the pitch with your teammates, with your customers, with your partners, is truly a four continent a day um, endeavor for me. And to some extent, what I have lost with the in-person touch, I've actually gained by beating time and travel physics by literally using <laughs> Zoom technology and literally uh, crossing the globe every day. And that's what it takes. The work ethic that it takes to be successful in this environment is 3x what it took in the other environment. And if you think about it, I can do so much more. So as long as you come up with creative ways to use the digital platform effectively, where you're honest, you're open, you're authentic, you're vulnerable, people still get to know you. And that's going to be the key. Of course, when I can get back on the road, I'll do it. And I'll try to do it where I can get mass scale attention for every trip I take. Mm. Now, uh, let, let me flip that question a bit. And, and I think it's relevant to some of the conversations we're having today around uh, diversity in the workplace and, and challenges around advancement. It seems to me that with a distanced workforce, with a more working from home workforce, the penalty that you get as an organization for bad management probably increases, right? Because uh, if somebody's got a bad manager, they're more isolated from the rest of the organization. They might have a, a, a even more severe morale impact. They might not have their coworkers around them in the same sort of way to commiserate. Do you have to think about different kinds of structures to either address management related issues earlier? Like, does that require different or better HR? What do you do? You know, John, it's really a great question because the whole thing is connectivity with people and making people the center of everything we do. Um, you know, whether we're talking to our customers about how they create great employee experiences um, or great customer experiences, it's all about the people. Um, and you're absolutely right. The fault line in every company has always been the first line manager. People don't leave companies, they leave managers. People have great careers at companies because they had a great experience with their manager. So it's more and more important that the cascading effect of how you set the tempo up top and then at the next layer and the next layer is so unified and so harmonized in the messaging. And then we need to also do immediate pulse checks on how are we coming through? So if I have something that's a global meeting, I know down to the individual level what the feedback was. We're constantly asking people, how are we doing? Can we do better? What are your ideas? And it's amazing how a workhorse like the workflow platform of ServiceNow, the Now platform, gives us that ability to actually go direct to consumer, if you will, which is the employee. And that makes all the difference. And you're right. We're learning a lot about management. We're learning a lot about leadership. We're learning a lot about what we can do better. I, I want to start talking about the technology, but on the way there, I want to talk about the technology workforce. Um, agile software development has been a popular concept, especially over the last few years, and not necessarily a, a necessary component of it, but one of the principles is getting people together in a room, um, actually being together physically, and there have been all this investment in campuses. Is there 
either a, a take on agile or a different philosophy that the industry is going to have to embrace for, for how the work gets done in the most efficient manner under this new way of working? For sure, John. You know, as you know, if you think about industries, you know, retail is going to be different than oil and gas. You know, how you do work on an oil rig is going to be different than how you do work in a retail store than how you do work in a traditional office environment or in a development environment where engineers are collaborating around the next big idea for innovation. So that's why I say it's a work from anywhere or a distributed work environment. You're going to have a hybrid approach to getting intellectual capacity ideas and execution um, at an art form level. I don't believe you can do this without workflow. And without mm -hmm. workflow, there is no innovation because you've got to get everybody in the pitch and you've got to cross silos in many cases. You know, Even if you invent a great software product, you're going to have to have finance involved to fund it. You're going to have to have HR involved to get the best skills and the best people to complement it. And obviously executive management involved to actually take something to market for customers. So you're always collaborating within a department and across departments. And the only way to do that is through workflow. What we've learned um, is agility is the number one thing. Um, if you look at the original emergency response to COVID, in three days, we brought our products to market. If you look at return to workplace, we brought that to work um, to the work environment in one week and our biggest customers were able to implement it in two weeks. Um, so you're mm -hmm. dealing with a level of speed and execution that we've never seen before in the world. And that's what it's going to take to win. All right, Bill McDermott, CEO of ServiceNow. We we're talking about the future of work. Let's move on and talk a bit about the technology and product specifically. How has your product roadmap changed because of this, if at all? Is there stuff, I mean, I know there's some stuff that you're building that you hadn't planned to build, but how much? Yeah, well, I mean, the big thing is really um, coalescing around COVID, you know, dealing with the early emergency and then the return to workplace. You know, what we are trying to do, John, is remain a purpose-driven company. Our purpose is to help the world of work work better for people. Work has to work better for people. And that, because it's ingrained in our culture, came easy to us when we dropped everything to respond to COVID. Now we need to help our customers work from anywhere. And therefore you have, you know, customers like Accenture moving 500,000 people to a work from home environment um, and doing it on the fly. You have companies like um, Lowe's that had to, you know, deal with leave requests and furlough requests and various other things where you have 330,000 people that they have to deal with and they had to respond to that and get that out and live in 96 hours. So we're in a whole new ball game. Companies like Uber with a very interesting, diverse business model had to go live within two weeks on the return to workplace apps. So that's been the center point. But having said that, John, the big idea is the platform itself. The workflow revolution is in full flight. Uh, one of the big breakthroughs, John, in the future will be 5G. I mean, you think about 5G, you think about the depth and the bandwidth that comes with a thousand times the connection power, a thousand times the data power, uh, moving away from wires to wireless routers and doing all of this in mass scale and how that's gonna impact IoT, um, how that's going to literally make each of the assets in the value chain in and of themselves a computer, a computer that mm. accepts data, a computer that can make decisions, a computer that you have to protect and secure, yet you also have to engage in the workflow itself as we move into AI and ML at mass scale and workflow actually starts to run companies and the people don't have to do the mundane tasks anymore. They're saved for the more important predictive decisions that come their way and the choices that they get to make. And instead of having data points with thousands of choices, you know, AI will take it down to the vital few so the mission critical decisions that a decision maker can make have high accuracy and high impact. 5G will be one of the big transformational agents of change as we look ahead five years. Well, while we're talking about 5G, 
and AI. One of the ways that I've used ServiceNow recently within our organization is to, to request the right kind of laptop that I need to be, yes, pro produ productive at headquarters in Inglewood Cliffs, where I still go, but also at home uh, for, for stuff like this. Do you envision a time when, um, as part of what ServiceNow does, the equipment is reporting its own service needs, right? Uh, because it's connected in a 5G world, in a, in a kind of either low bandwidth, a widely distributed way, or there's just more capability? Are you, are you kind of engineering and architecting what you do around that vision of the future? A hundred percent, John. We're already on this and working it with customers um, like Xerox and others. If you think about field service, you know, the idea is to have something in the field that never goes down, but when it does, or it's about to, the signal is sent. If you can redact the issue uh, remotely, that's fantastic. But if you do have to manage an incident and respond, you wanna do that in a way that never impacts the customer. And you also wanna make sure you get the right person with the right tool, the right training and the right capability to remediate something in the fastest time possible. That's where the margin performance is in all well-run companies. So we're gonna be in a predictive world. We're gonna be in an instant response world and you're not gonna be dealing with incident management in the field that isn't first predicted in many cases, taken care of before the problem even shows itself up to the customer. This has already begun of course, but with the power of 5G and other tools, especially the workflow revolution, I think that um, it's gonna just be a whole nother game. It's gonna be a whole nother world and the margin profile of companies today that are really getting taken down because they don't have service management at a high enough margin levels will see a hockey stick with these new technologies in terms of margin performance and profitability. Well, well, we got a question in that I, I think is, is interesting from what we've been talking about, and it's about best practices that maybe you've seen from customers at this time. When, when it comes to uh, mobility, people out in the field, maybe in way or at, out at home in ways that they're not used to being, what companies or what examples have you seen that are great uh, for, for uh, just how they've been able to use technology and stay efficient? Well, you know, I, I gave the, um, the, the conversation earlier on Accenture, you know, moving 500,000 people um, to work from home environment is, is pretty stunning. Um, if I look at 7-Eleven, you know, a company like 7-Eleven literally using customer service management tools from ServiceNow to resolve problems and make sure customer satisfaction um, needs were met and doing that 200 times faster than they've ever done it before, it, it's pretty stunning. Um, you know, the list goes on, the whole idea of um, putting people first and the employee experience. Look at health and human services in a crisis like COVID. They moved you know, 74,000 people to the now platform, enabled them to work from home, gave them a gorgeous mobile experience so they could achieve their mission uh, for the uh, American citizens. You know, it's a, it's a pretty amazing accomplishment. I look at states like Washington State, you know, not only managing is incidents, but using the platform to deal with federal and state um, emergency fund uh, processes and doing that in record time and then having the kindness along with ServiceNow to open source that to the global community. Um, those are just mm. beautiful case studies and uh, things I'm really proud of. I look at Disney. I'm so proud of Disney. You know, if you look at what Disney is as a brand and what they mean to the world, it's just amazing. But you know, COVID turned down the theme parks, turned down the cinemas. You know, Michael Jordan gave us the last dance, but other than that, ESPN really didn't have a lot of sports going on, but they had a dream and the dream was Disney Plus. And in five months, they have more than 55 million subscribers running on the Now platform using virtual agents so people can connect on the internet with a simple, gorgeous experience. And then the humans are saved only when there's a real issue or a real problem that requires settling. I mean, these are just fantastic cases and there's so many more, John. Yeah, and as, as we begin to draw to a close, I, I, I wonder what you think the biggest dangers are for companies right now. Right now, there's 
probably pe there's pressure certainly to cut costs, perhaps to lay off. Right now, interest rates are low. So for companies that um, that have access to capital, there's probably a temptation to, to make big spend. In some cases, probably spend that they should make capital investment that's wise to make. But but maybe some companies are going to buy some stuff they shouldn't. What do you see as the most dangerous but perhaps tempting moves that are that are in front of the C-suite's desk right now? I would give you two. Um, I would basically say first of all, um, digital first um, is a mandate that should not be delayed because if you invest in digital first now and you truly do digitally transform your company, you will be a winner on the other side of every crisis. And history has always shown us this. So now is the time to accelerate digital transformation. But I wouldn't do it the old way. I would do it based upon the engagement of people and those people including your employees and your customers. And I would completely use the IT platform and I would really think about this workflow revolution as a way to use engagement as an instant fuse to value and not get caught up in these long drawn out projects that take too long or too expensive and they bring enormous risk. So cloud-based computing solutions like ServiceNow, I think can really make a huge difference. The second thing is people. Again, I go back to people. You know, we're in a world where people matter most. You gotta take care of your own people, and make sure your employees are the most important priority and they feel that each and every day. Um, we have to absolutely win the war for talent in all of our companies. And that includes really getting out in front of race relations and making sure we're exemplars in the fairness by which we hire, the fairness by which we pay, the fairness by which we recruit and completely rethink that model, how we lobby for good in the world and ultimately how we create winning cultures. In our company, we're going to probably triple the workforce in the next five years. And what an opportunity to have a sea change, to have an employee base that looks exactly like the markets in which we compete. A company that everybody wants to work for because it stands for fairness and equality, and it really does drive all the value for the customers. So the culture is really all about doing the right thing and doing the right thing the right way. So I give you digital and I give you people. And uh, you can mix that in a blender any way you want, but that's the winning formula, John. Well, Bill, uh, that is gonna be the perfect bridge to what we're gonna continue to talk about um, in, in our next conversation with uh, Cynthia Marshall, CEO of the Dallas Mavericks. Bill, I, I appreciate you welcoming us into your home and having this conversation about the, the future of work and how you view it from the perspective of ServiceNow, this uh, enterprise SaaS cloud-based company that's really digitizing all kinds of workflows. I, I appreciate it, Bill. John, I'm grateful. It was wonderful to be with you and uh, all of your viewers. Very honored to spend this time with you, John. Thank you.